Vending machine is a preliminary version or a basic version of smart contract. Hello guys, welcome to today's video. In this video, we are going to talk about smart contracts. Well, a complicated topic, right? Let's see if we can simplify it. This video is divided into four parts. One, introduction to smart contracts, benefits, three issues, and number four, use cases. All right, let's start with the example. Consider a vending machine. You insert a 20 rupee note and you get a coke out of it. There is no person behind it. There is some piece of code written in the vending machine which tells that if A happens, then B should happen. That is a smart logic that is written into the vending machine. The smart contracts that we are talking about is nothing different from this. Vending machine is a preliminary version or a basic version of smart contract. The only difference with respect to the smart contracts that we are talking about are nothing but these smart contracts are on a decentralized blockchain. Well, hey, I told that I'll keep this video simple. Then why am I introducing these words? Let's go back to our example of vending machines and consider a few scenarios. You would have noticed a few guys kicking the vending machine with the hope that they will get an extra free Coke or you might also have noticed a few scenarios where people are inserting the bills and these bills are getting struck and the coke is not coming out. These kind of scenarios do play out. The smart contracts that we are talking about needs to have some kind of audit. They have to be verified whether these transactions are going in the right proper way or not and that happens through a group of people who don't know each other. And that is where decentralization kicks in. The other part is that once this transaction is complete, it has to be recorded somewhere. For example, it has to go on our account statements, right? And these account statements are nothing but ledgers which are written on a blockchain so that the data is public yet super safe. Essentially, what are smart contracts? Smart contracts are pieces of code written over decentralized blockchains, right? Now let's understand what are the benefits of these smart contracts. The first and the major benefit of smart contract is that it is trustworthy. Now let us imagine what is happening today, right? You see a fantastic startup opportunity outside of your home country and you want to invest some money in that startup. Unfortunately, you don't know anybody in that startup. Would you go ahead and invest your money? Most probably no, because you don't know, hey, is this entire transaction trustworthy or not? Similarly, can you lend 10,000 rupees to somebody that you don't know? Probably the hassle of writing a legal contract disrupts you from doing any of this, right? So there is no chance that you would probably lend 10,000 rupees to somebody that you don't know. Forget about startup investments. Now, what happens with a smart contract in place is that you know these are secure. These are trustworthy because these are verified by a group of people who don't know each other and who are not influenced by somebody. When such a secure audit is going on, at the same time, the data is in public and the entire transaction is codified you get little more trust to invest your money or to lend your money or to do any kind of transaction. This is the first benefit. The second advantage of these smart contracts is that it can potentially reduce corruption. Now let's take another example. Government is introducing a scheme where it will provide financial aid to the farmers who are adversely hit by some weather conditions. Now this has a lot of scope for correction, n number of intermediaries, lot of manipulation of data, right? So what smart contract can do in this situation is that it can remove all these intermediaries. There could be a logic fed which is saying that, hey, if data indicates this is the particular weather condition, then automatically sent in funds to these particular accounts, right? Without any kind of intermediary, without any human intervention, the possibility of corruption goes down quite a bit. 
The third benefit of a smart contract is the fact that with, without these intermediaries, the transaction costs will go down. Now add on top of that the superior trust element right, and the superior safety element. It just brings out a whole new value proposition. With benefits out of the way, let's look into potential issues, right? Smart contracts are as good as the developers writing that piece of code, correct? These are predefined codes. So it's very hard to anticipate the issues that can come up in the future. For example, in our vending machine case, the first guys who created these vending machines might not have anticipated on day one that hey people would be kicking vending machines with the hope that they'll get an additional coke now what happens in these smart contracts is that since these are predefined and you cannot change the code at a later point in time the issues that come up later on are pretty hard to resolve the second issue with smart contracts is the fact that these smart contracts are written by developers without any kind of insights or inputs from the legal world. The bridge between the technology and the legal world is still not bridged appropriately. You can imagine that hey, the issue resolution is not only complicated, but probably it is not well structured to start off with. But the belief is that in the next few years, both these and also all the other major issues would be resolved. Now getting into what are the industry use cases for these smart contracts. A very interesting use case of the smart contract is TerraZero. I'll give the link in the description box. Please go and check out TerraZero's website. What TerraZero manages is through a smart contract, they do manage selling and logging of trees in a forest. I'm not kidding guys, it is logging and selling of trees in a forest in Germany. And this entire process is managed through a smart contract. Satellites and drones monitor the growth of trees and they trigger a few events within the smart contract which will enable subcontracts for logging and selling of the trees. Now just imagine, right? If you can manage a forest through a smart contract, what else can you manage? Just imagine, probably you can manage your home in Goa which you want to Airbnb. Probably you can sell your car through a smart contract. All these possibilities are opening up and in the very near future, you will see a place where a lot of these applications do pop up. So to conclude this video, I believe that there is no escape from smart contracts for any of us. In the next few years, we will keep hearing about smart contracts. So it's important that we have at least a basic understanding of smart contracts. So please go into the comment section and write what a smart contract means to you. I would love to read them, which will help me understand that hey, you are actually learning something from these videos. All right guys, thank you and look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.